You want to know what wagertainment is? It's the picks, the analysis, the information mixed with the laughter and the entertainment. Smart sports betting content. That'll put a smile on your face. The BetQL Network, streaming live each day and helping you bet smarter. If you're a sports fan, you know why you should listen? It's sports betting content without the BS. No hot takes, no nonsense. The BetQL Network, streaming live right now on Odyssey. Sports, bets, and entertainment. Odyssey's going back to school, and we've got all the supplies you need, like A-plus exclusive music stations and podcasts to help you or your student excel. Wake up and get the school day started with Acoustic Sunrise, the best mix of acoustic pop. Hit the books with classical Odyssey, passionate classical music to help you focus while you study. Listen to essential school podcasts like Grammar Girl's Quick and Dirty Tips for Better Writing and be inspired with TED Talks Daily. Get back to school with new exclusive stations, plus all your favorite local radio stations and podcasts on Odyssey. Here's the snap to Brady. They send a safety blitz. Gets about a caught ball. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Gronkowski again. Fire the cannons. A 36-yard field goal attempt. Far side hash by Ryan Suck up to win it. 29-28 Cowboys. Seven seconds left. Good snap. The spot. Here's the kick by Suck up. Is it good? It is good. Box take the lead at 31-29 with two seconds left. How about them Buccaneers defending the Super Bowl championship and taking the lead with just two seconds left in the game? A Wildcat formation. Pollard's going to run to his right. He's going to run to his right. He's going to be saved and dropped. He drops the ball a lateral. It's caught in the backfield. Tackle made. That's the ball game. Box win. Box win. Box win. We beat the Cowboys 31 to 29. Fire the cannons. Last year sucked after the first game. Let me say that. That was come a long way uh, from 365 days ago. Uh, that was a pretty lonely feeling after the game there in the Superdome. But, um, you know, again, we won. It's great. But, you know, we know that it was uh, a far from perfect, and we've got to get back to work and clean a lot of stuff up. Yeah, well, you got the win, Tom. Calm down a little bit. Oh, man, what a great start as we say good morning to everybody here on a Friday. What a great start to the NFL season. Um, game ended up going back and forth. Wild last couple of minutes. And there you have it with 124 left. Down one. Tom Brady has a drive. And all he needs is a field goal. He doesn't even need the touchdown. He Too just, much time on the he, clock, Yeah, Joe. he's just got to get there and suck up. By the way, if, if you didn't know, is one of the better field goal kickers uh, from last year in, in the league. And uh, 36 yards is uh, is a chip shot for most of these guys anyway. Uh, don't say that to the other kicker across the uh, no. sideline last night. It started off bad with a missed extra point and a missed field goal yeah. for Greg the leg. That was tough, man. But uh, listen, anyway, uh, they get the win. And more importantly, the Godwin end. pushed off on that last drive. Yeah, though, right? yeah, okay. yeah. I just yeah, want to get yeah. that let's out of the way. We, we're let's, good with let's that. Let's get okay. that. And they didn't call it. We'll do that. And you can blame all the different things and stuff. But you know what? The great thing about football, it gives you a zillion things either way to talk about. Listen, the Bucs turned the ball over four times and had 11 penalties. You know what that usually means in the NFL? A loss. You you lost by double digits is what that means. Four turnovers, 11 penalties, over 100 yards in penalties. Oh, I remember those kind of games. And we never won them. And guess what? Tampa Bay still won. And uh, and it was great. You couldn't handpick a, a better game. Both offensive lines gave their quarterbacks time to throw, and uh, and the show was on. And it was just good to see Dak Prescott out there last night too, looking uh, like he's back in that category. Right off the bat, right, Those right, twenty nine yard Woo! one down Man. the sideline, and guys wide open, and and that just kind of got him going. By the way, that was the surprise of the night. What was, you know, everybody? You want to talk about being under a microscope? being a Dallas Cowboys quarterback coming off an injury and then having a shoulder problem. And we got 2,000 doctors out there saying, by by the way, better known as insiders, not Mm -hmm. just doctors. But talking about, oh, yeah, you know what? He's afraid to step. And we think that has something to do with his shoulder. And he goes, let me t- let me show you about this shoulder you guys are all worried about. And uh, and he's got some good receivers now. He does. He's got a couple of number ones, and I mean not just drafted number one, but some guys that can play. So anyway, it all it all came out to hey, I can see the commissioner 
last night going, yeah, that's the way you kick it off, right. man. We did it. What Every, a great game. Everybody wanted to see it. It was a full house. People were going nuts. The fireworks, that friggin' cannon that scares the crap out of me every <laughs> time I hear it. Because you don't hear it for a while, and then you, it just it is loud. It gets you jumping. gets you a little jumpy, especially if you're working on a hangover. You stayed up late the night before. Always gets you, man. Just always gets you. But, uh, yeah, that was uh, one hell of a, a show. I, I mean, there were so many different parts to it. Brady and Gronk keep connecting is one of the greatest combinations in the history of the NFL for quarterback and, and receiver. Targeted eight times, caught eight balls last night. You don't Can't see do that a lot either, that. right? No, can't do any better than that. You put him out there, and by the way, he's just continuation now of the guy that played in the Super Bowl, and it looks like he's going to have a monster year. But I got to tell you, the Antonio Brown, maybe, by the way, maybe the best work done by Tom Brady selling Bruce Arians saying, hey, listen, I know you didn't like Antonio Brown. There's no, there, there's no question he won your kind of guy in Pittsburgh and what right. he pulled. I right. get it. He said it. And, right. and you're watching all this stuff. And you even said he, he's not, not a good fit for this team. Tom Brady obviously went in there and said, listen, man, I had a little time with him before the last team I was with got rid of him. He's really friggin' good. I know you got two really good wide receivers, actually three, but you don't have anything like this guy. No. This guy, just imagine this, Coach. Antonio Brown lining up as basically your third wide receiver with Gronk and the other two guys that you've had here, that you drafted here. I mean, he gets – they they jumped the guy in the inside. Godwin gets jumped inside last night. Antonio Brown, a little stutter and go. Gets about three yards of separation for a long touchdown. And you're going, how in the hell are you, or the Miami Dolphins in about a month, going to cover all those guys? Antonio Brown with uh, many. And then I-, I thought of you guys last night, why this was all going on with fantasy football. Oh, man. Uh, a wide receiver and quarterback dream come true last night with, uh, I- I'm guessing Gronk had to be one of the first not the first, but no, he one was, of the top tier tight ends taken. You would be shocked that he was not one of them. In my two of my leagues, he was not. He dropped huge, like, like I'm talking like tenth, eleventh, twelfth round, and he was a fifth, sixth, or seventh tight end off the board hmm. at that point. And last night, he proved that if this is the way he's going to play with Brady all season, he's a number one tight end. He is a number one guy at that position. Targeted eight times, two touchdowns. Him and Brady look like they haven't missed a beat. Yeah. Like, that's scary. Well, and the other one uh, that – and I just go by targets, man. I you I know you guys are in the fantasy football stuff. Oh, well, we love the know, numbers. Right. But, but listen, targets equals catches, man. You throw it. Last night, I believe Amari Cooper had 16 targets. He did. 13 game. catches, right? 16 targets. You're going to catch no matter who you are. If somebody throws you the ball 16 times, you are going to have a big game. And last night – so whoever got Amari Cooper in your fantasy football, you should feel pretty good. Um, either quarterback, if you had either one of those last night, you did good. The only th- the only person last night that if you had on your team you were really bummed about is if you had Zeke Elliott, who was a top five pick in most drafts. Guy ran for thirty three yards last yeah. night. wasn't really involved in the offense because they were throwing the ball. I mean, what did Dak throw the ball fifty eight times last night? If you're uh, you're looking for a little old school rock 'em sock 'em football that uh, everybody says you need, especially later in the year, that wasn't the game no. last night. But I can tell you one thing: the NFL's going. That's why we changed all those rules, man. It's great for passing. It's great. So, got a what a what a game thirty one twenty nine. And uh, Ryan Suckup, I love that name, by the way. I just love the guy's <laughs> got a name. So can you growing up with your last name, Suckup? Yeah, it probably wasn't great for him. And, and can you imagine, like, you get in real tight with one of the T's? Yeah, you exactly. Big suck Come up. on. Right. Big Suckup, man. <laughs> anyway, yeah, he uh, not a bad kicker either, by the way. We've uh, got a lot of other stuff. I- I'll tell you what. There's always one team that seems cursed with injuries. And I got to tell you, the Ravens have now lost after practice – they lose in practice. Now, now I, I, I just want to say this. There are two days. There's an offensive day and defensive day of practice where, where you turn it up. Not that you're tackling each other, but, but you're going full speed and you're putting a game plan in. You want to run it a full time. You want to run it a few times. So, so you can get some timing on whatever plays you're going to run as coaches already put in the game plans and now the guys get to see it. And, and they want you to go pre- pretty hard. They want you until you get used to it. 
So, so you do pick it up on offensive day and defensive day, whether you're the defense or offense. That's your day to really pick it up going against the scout team or what are we going to call it, the practice squad team. Right. All the practice the squad guys, guys now, yeah, right. get, get a chance uh, to, to come out and help you out and give you the look and all those things. But they have now lost, the Ravens have lost their three top running backs before they ever get to the first game is one of the most – crazy it was i've never seen him before dobbins gus the bus and what is it justice, justice hill justice hill yeah he was the third string guy right just uh nutty and then on top of that oh by the way marcus peters one of the better corners and he's out with an acl so i i don't i mean it's just pure it's just bad luck man i, I mean you can't whoa what are they doing practicing in practice well they got to practice somewhere hell he ain't playing them so imagine uh, within four plays or five plays in, in a practice that you got to watch as a media guy, man. you see two dudes go down that are extremely important to your team for this season. And then all of a sudden Harbaugh just blows the whistle and calls practice. Like something's happening out here. I don't know what it is. We're done. Let's go inside. Yeah. And uh, Le'Veon wanted a chance to revive his career. Here you go. Or Devonta Freeman. How about those two names are on the practice squad for the Baltimore yeah. Ravens? Not for long. Yep. Not for long. By the way, the uh, the other part of this, they have been, if you don't follow the stats on it, one of the best running teams over the last three or four years since uh, that guy playing quarterback named Lamar Jackson took over. They have been a really putting up stupid numbers on running the football. So, man, that's a crazy one. Then we were talking about that T.J. Watt deal. That's a, a crazy one, too. Um, he got paid. It, it whatever the, the whatever they were doing before they have decided we got to change some of our policies in the organization you think as far as paying great players and uh, TJ Watt deal gets done he did it the right way listen he handled everything there was no drama there held a little bit there it was us it wasn't him he was practicing doing everything he could around it got his deal done four year 112 million Woo. with 80 guaranteed. By the way, my man is now officially set. Go out and play full speed. You got the bills coming up here, and uh, he got paid. So they got it worked out. Steelers, apparently, some of those old policies they had, old school policies. What was the one? Just guarantee the first year of the deal? That's what it was? Yeah. <laughs> well, they're going to – looks like most of that, or it's going to have guarantees just about every year uh, going. And listen, if he plays the way he's playing over the next four years, it won't matter anyway. He's going to get all the damn money, or they'll have to redo a contract again. At age thirty or or thirty one, yeah, yeah, we got uh, a How about lot. That, those Watt boys, by the way, before you go to break, how much yeah. money they've taken the NFL for? Not bad, Woo! not bad. And, and you know what? You talk about both of them in their prime and the two of the best pass rushers. Just uh, I don't know what that family's doing. Apparently, mom and dad work on pass rushing move because they're both damn good. All right, Michael Dieter, center of the Miami Dolphins, going to join us coming up here in, in uh, just a couple of minutes. He's probably grabbing that first coffee. All those guys out of Wisconsin, I believe, drink. A hot coffee in the morning. I know we'll they know like soon. burgers and right. stuff because we've had Michael uh, Dieter on before. <laughs> right. But anyway, he'll uh, join us and we'll talk to him about putting this offensive line together and what a roller coaster he's had going into year three. All Innovation. Resilience. Agility. It's how Michigan businesses work together and continue to build the future. Our expertise, talented workforce, and collaborative environment are making a difference now and shaping the future. Join us and make your mark where it matters. Visit michiganbusiness.org slash radio to put your plans in motion. That's michiganbusiness.org slash radio. You want to know what wagertainment is? It's the picks, the analysis, the information mixed with the laughter and the entertainment, smart sports betting content. That'll put a smile on your face. The BetQL Network, streaming live each day and helping you bet smarter. If you're a sports fan, you know why you should listen? It's sports betting content without the BS. No hot takes, no nonsense. The BetQL Network, streaming live right now on Odyssey. Sports, bets, and entertainment. How is your mental health? 
Billie Eilish, Kevin Love of the Cleveland Cavaliers, Imagine Dragons, Lil Nas X, and so many more feel the same pressures we do. They're joining our host, Carson Daly, for I'm Listening, September 23rd, starting at 6 p.m. right here. Carson and a cast of mental health experts, athletes, musicians, other notables, and you will share stories, insights, and help us all remember that we are not alone. Please join us, because talking about our mental health has the power to save lives. For more, visit imlistening.org. Odyssey's going back to school, and we've got all the supplies you need, like A-plus exclusive music stations and podcasts to help you or your student excel. Wake up and get the school day started with Acoustic Sunrise, the best mix of acoustic pop. Hit the books with classical Odyssey, passionate classical music to help you focus while you study. Listen to essential school podcasts like Grammar Girl's Quick and Dirty Tips for Better Writing, and be inspired with TED Talks Daily. Get back to school with new exclusive stations, plus all your favorite local radio stations and podcasts on Odyssey. That is coming up next. Miami has the Dolphins, the greatest football team. All right, Joe, we're going to head out to the Toyota of Hollywood hotline right now. Shop over 1,500 Toyotas indoors in one of America's largest showrooms at Toyota of Hollywood on 441 between Hollywood and Sheridan. Michael Dieter, starting center for the Miami Dolphins, is going to join us here for a couple minutes. Good morning, Mike. Thanks for the time. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Hey, Michael, got a lot of stuff to get to. And first of all, with all the offense alignment, um, like yourself, has to play more than one position. I've always wondered, is it harder the guard-tackle combination or center-guard combination to learn and play at a high level? What's more difficult? Um, I would I would say physically, guard and tackle is harder. It's just it, it's more space. The players are usually a little more athletic and powerful. Um, center and center for sure is mentally tougher than guard and tackle, just because you're making a lot more calls. Your your ID and defenses for the whole offense. Um, so there's a lot more on your plate mentally. But sometimes you'll play teams that you're uncovered the whole game. So it, it's a little bit different sometimes physically, but mentally it's definitely tougher to play center. Yeah, and by the way, you played them all in college. I mean, if there's one guy when you got yeah. here, they go, oh, Michael Dieter, he can do them all. Help, let him run routes at tight end. He can do it all, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's fit. Yeah, it was crazy because you have actually played tackle here too. Yeah, I always wondered that because oh, yeah. you got those speed guys, the best pass rushers in the world on the outside mm-hmm. trying to make you look silly, beating you off the ball and stuff. Oh, and, yeah. And then you slide in and you got a 350-pound guy that nobody can move in the league. It's a hell of a yep. combo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Michael, now that you're, yeah, you know, yeah. right now that you're like set at that spot at center, first couple of years in the league trying to find the spot, trying to get on the field as much as you can. How frustrating mm-hmm. how frustrating was it for you that you couldn't be on the field at all times for this team after being drafted and now finally finding a spot where you're the guy there? Um, it was it was definitely a little bit frustrating, but I just kept focusing on making sure I was getting better and like you said, work in any position that could get me back on the field and, and help the Dolphins win. So didn't want to get too upset about it. Just make sure you're working every day and making sure you're practicing good. Hopefully you'll find your way back on the field. And Michael, shit and make sure I was getting better every day. Michael, 15 starts just to follow up what Zach was saying. 15 starts as a rookie. And then last year you find yourself in a backup playing some, but in a backup role. And now Mm -hmm. starting, man, you have been what they call through the offensive line roller coaster. I I just (laughs) what what's it like coming out of Wisconsin where you guys are Notre Dame, you guys are all known for your offensive lines. The the frustration uh going through that from a starter now year two, there you are as a as a backup for a couple of positions. Um, it was it was a little bit of a roller coaster, yeah. I mean there were some days where it was it was definitely frustrating. We wanted to be out on the field playing. Um, it, it's been forever since I wasn't out on the field playing, like you said. So it was definitely it was weird to to be a backup, but just making sure that I was helping the guys who were playing, and if my number was called to go in and play, like it was the one game that I was ready and didn't hold us back at all. So that's all I could really focus on. Yeah, let's let's talk about center for a second. Um, I always wonder about this. Everybody's a little different. Uh, finding those pre-snap reads on what everybody's doing and letting your guys know um, mm-hmm. is that is that the first job, the first responsibility, even before you snap the ball, is to look up and try to figure out what what everybody's loaded, what side. 
Yeah, yeah the first thing is, is basically getting up to the line and making sure everyone knows who the center's working to or who the center's sliding to and pass or all that. And then after that, it's it's what's abnormal about this defense. What are the tells that we've studied all week on tape? What are they showing us that could be a pressure indicator, all that stuff? And then you got to communicate it as well. You can't just see it and keep it to yourself. you got to make sure everyone else knows and what it means and, and what your adjustments are. So, yeah, yeah there's a, been a lot. Hey, Michael, then they shift around and screw the whole damn thing up and you're running out <laughs> of time they... and you got to do the shotgun snap. That's great, right? As soon as they start the cadence at all 180s. So. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Right. By the way, how are you on the shotgun stuff? Do you feel comfortable after, you know, yeah. you got to get a back to it, likes it in a certain spot? Yeah. yeah. What's that like? Yeah. It, it's been good. I It kind of was like riding a bike. Man, it, I was still able to put it back there and be at least somewhat accurate. Not every now and then it's been a little bit, hey, that was, that was a little low or something like that. But for the most part, it's been been good. Michael, I can't lie to you, man. I, I like to be straight with you here on the show because you, you know us a little bit. We, we've had John before. Been a lot of mm-hmm. talk about the offensive line. Are we finally going to find five guys that can play together and get mm-hmm. better? And this guy, now he's playing there. Now he's playing there. Why can't he play? <laughs> what, what, what do you say about all that? So do, do you feel good? Now we don't know if the left tackle, Austin Jackson, going to play, which means somebody else going to have to play. Do you feel, mm-hmm. you feel pretty good about this group? Yeah, I, I feel good about the guys we'll have in the room all year, active and, and even inactive. That I mean, their focus is getting better each day and making sure that if anyone at, at any position's number is called, that they're ready to go out and make sure they play good and help the Miami Dolphins win, not, not hold us back and if, if it is musical chairs for because of COVID or injuries, like it always ends up being at least a little bit, we need to have another guy who's ready to step in and, and play good because it's not always going to be the same five all 17 games. Michael, uh, obviously a relationship with a quarterback is big for your position at center. Uh, what's the relationship like with Tua, and how is he in the huddle? The, 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 does he take command of the huddle? There's always been talk about Tua. If it's not the offensive line, it's, yep. oh, let's talk about Tua. How is he in that huddle? Oh, yeah. Mike, Michael, it's always Tua talk around here. Right. Just or so offensive you know. line, yeah. right. It's one or the yeah. other, right. It's got to be. It's got to be, yeah. Um, he's been good. He's grown a lot. He's definitely taken way more command of the offense. And I would say just me and his relationship personally has gotten a lot better. I mean, the offseason, we're out golfing, hanging out, doing all that type of stuff which I think definitely helps come stressful moments on the football field. When and you're with guys who you truly care about and you're friends with, it's, it's easier to get things right, get things corrected. And I think that's where we're moving to, which is really exciting. And what? it's definitely shown the more he creates relationships with the guys in the offense, the more he can take command of the huddle. Yeah. No, you're right. So important. That chemistry thing, man, is definitely not overrated. Hey, the other thing I want to ask you is you have been through – a lot of offensive line coaches for just a couple <laughs> years have been here. So how difficult? I always wonder. So now you got Coach Jean Pierre there, um, a new lead offensive line coach. You, you've had at one point you had two in like one day. I, I'm just curious, yeah. what's that been like having all these guys? Is it a lot different? Is every guy different? Do some guys work better for you? Talk to me about that. Um, it, it's been a little bit different, but. It, it's been cool. I mean, you get different personalities, a little bit of different coaching styles, techniques that are new to you. Um, obviously, Len, I, I really like Len. I, I love the way he coaches. I love the way he teaches things. Um, but it, it, there are different guys who have different mindsets on things, different little tidbits of information to give you. But I really like the way Len coaches. He's a good mix of, you know, Let's make sure we're focused, get our work done, intensity. And then he's also a good mix of, you know, he cares about you as a person, wants to talk other stuff other than football, make sure you're right off the field, which it's, it's encouraging. When they finally came to you and said, here they are in year three after what you went through in year two, and they go, hey, Michael, we want to talk to you for a second. Guess what, man? We think you can be the starting center. What was that like to know, like, we really want you to focus on center? What was that day like? It, it was cool. I mean, because I I'd gotten an opportunity at guard, and it went it went good some days, went bad some days, and 
obviously they, they signed some guys to play guard. And when they said, hey, we want to give you a chance to, to develop and play at center, I was like, I love it. I'm, I'll do just that. And I was just excited to, to get more chances. It didn't matter if I was playing guard, center, or tackle, but I was just excited to, to get a chance to, to play and to, to develop and help us out. We, uh, we've known Devon Gotcha, all of us, real well, and you know him, oh, former yeah. teammate. Um, I've always wondered, because he talks trash with me personally. I see him in high school football, and he's always, <laughs> I got to hear about LSU to the point I can't stand him now. But I'm just wondering for you, um, you expect him to be yapping at that defensive tackle position or just going to be um, real quiet and all business? What do you expect? I think it'll be a little bit of yapping, but I mean, he, on the field, he was never too bad. I mean, he actually he does a lot of friendly jabbing and yapping off the field, but really on the field, it's 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 usually all business with him, which is funny because you're right, he's kind of got like a a chirping personality to him, but on the field, it's not really like that. So I think it'll be pretty pretty business. Well, I had to ask you this, and I know it came out the other day. Is it a big deal in the locker room who the captain of the teams are or the captains of the team are? Because obviously the national media likes to make a big deal out of just about everything yeah. that goes on down here. And I just have to ask you personally, it matters who wears that C on their chest in the locker room or not for guys, as long as the guys are going out there. It, it matters. I mean, a little. it matters. It doesn't necessarily matter who the guy is, but if, if you're a guy who's voted captain, it means a lot. Like, it, it's an honor to be a captain, to be the guy that, you know, speaks for your team, goes to coaches with concerns and all that is basically the voice of the team, but it, it doesn't mean you're not a leader. Like, you do not need a, a captain identity to be a leader on a football team. That's that's just a little extra bonus of being a leader, but it's not the end-all, be-all of how you need to be a leader or anything like that. So many guys can lead and never even really aspire to have the captain logo, but they're some of the greatest leaders you ever meet. Yeah. All right, I got one more for you. It's kind of important, man, this one. We've been talking about one of your former teammates, T.J. Watt, for a while now. Mm -hmm. Did you have any idea when you were playing with him at Wisconsin he was going to be this friggin' good? <laughs> uh, at the end, yes. But it really, I just remember him as a, a, a tight end. He had some knee injuries. He was, he was a walk-on tight end with some knee injuries. And wow. It was like it was. We were wondering if he'd ever play tight end or if he'd play football. And then one day they're like, "Yeah, they asked him to switch positions," and he went over to outside linebacker. And then we all knew this dude's got a lot of juice, and he's been playing the wrong position the whole time. That is crazy. A so, position change. So wow. he switched wow. positions yeah. from wow. tight end to right. become maybe the best pass rusher in the NFL. Yeah. That yep. is His first couple of years in school, he was a tight end that he was battling some injuries and just wasn't really getting many reps, and then bang. Mike, oh, that, that's, that's crazy. That yeah, crazy. man. Crazy. Welcome right. to the National Football League. Right. My God, and yep. that contract that he got and everything else. Yeah. Yep. Hey, Good it, for him. That's it's, awesome. That's right. And, Michael, it's great having you, man. Really appreciate you spending time. You know, we don't get to see Thank you. you. You know, we don't get to see you much. So, really appreciate yep. you coming on this morning. Thank Thanks, you. Mike. Thanks for having me. See you guys. All right, it's Michael Dieter joining us on the Toyota of Hollywood Hotline. Are you going to the Dolphins or the University of Miami football games this season at Hard Rock Stadium? Well, if you are, download Waze and let Waze start your game day off right. Waze gives you personalized directions right to your parking lot that you'll be in at the stadium. Just download Waze before you go. Enter your lot name and let Waze lead the way. All right, Zach, we uh, got to talk about something very important. Um, if you work someplace, and we have it here, I'm not going to lie, and we're not mad. But it gets a little warm in here from time to time. We don't have air conditioning. You know what? I always tell those guys, I go, if you just called Air Around the Clock, they'd come down here and help you out, man. Air Around the Clock Air Conditioning Company. Family owned and been around forever. Forever. And you know what they do really well with 120 trucks on the road every day all over Broward and Palm Beach, even little parts of Dade? Well, they got those trained and certified technicians with, on those 120 trucks working seven days a week to come out quickly and take care of your air conditioning problem. Let's be honest. If you have an air conditioning problem or your air conditioning unit is dead, it's not working at all and you need a new one, sure is nice to be able to make a call and have somebody come out quickly so you don't have a hot house or a hot business that you're working at. 
Well, you won't have that there around the clock. This thing was built on great service. That's never going to change, man. They got special financing for you, 90% approval rate, and they're ready to help you with any kind of air conditioning problem you have right now. All you have to do is call 1-888-FIX-MY-AC. I like to do that. 1-888-FIX-MY-AC. So don't sweat it. You got air around the clock. And by the way, any kind of plumbing problems, air around the clock's always had great plumbers over there for you. Uh, any kind of problem there, just go to 855-PLUMBER, water heater, need a new one, clog toilets, or any other problem you have and you desperately need a really good plumber, just remember, air around the clock. I'm Doc Rivers, and I'm proud to present a new podcast documentary series called It Was Said Sports, where I guide you through six of the most impactful and timeless speeches in sports history. Listen and follow It Was Said Sports, a documentary podcast presentation of Shining City Audio, a C-13 Originals, and John Meacham Studio. Available now on Odyssey and wherever you listen to your podcasts. How is your mental health? Billie Eilish, Kevin Love of the Cleveland Cavaliers, Imagine Dragons, Lil Nas X, and so many more feel the same pressures we do. They're joining our host, Carson Daly, for I'm Listening, September 23rd, starting at 6 p.m. right here. Carson and a cast of mental health experts, athletes, musicians, other notables, and you will share stories, insights, and help us all remember that we are not alone. Please join us, because talking about our mental health has the power to save lives. For more, visit imlistening.org. Odyssey's going back to school, and we've got all the supplies you need, like A-plus exclusive music stations and podcasts to help you or your student excel. Wake up and get the school day started with Acoustic Sunrise, the best mix of acoustic pop. Hit the books with classical odyssey, passionate classical music to help you focus while you study. Listen to essential school podcasts like Grammar Girl's quick and dirty tips for better writing and be inspired with TED Talks Daily. Get back to school with new exclusive stations, plus all your favorite local radio stations and podcasts on Odyssey. You want to know what wagertainment is? It's the picks, the analysis, the information mixed with the laughter and the entertainment. Smart sports betting content. That'll put a smile on your face. The BetQL Network, streaming live each day and helping you bet smarter. If you're a sports fan, you know why you should listen? It's sports betting content without the BS. No hot takes, no nonsense. The BetQL Network, streaming live right now on Odyssey. Sports, bets, and entertainment. All right, welcome back. Happy Friday to uh, everybody. Matter of fact, uh, unbelievable. 9-11, we were talking this morning before the show started. 20-year anniversary Oof, tomorrow. Man. Huh? Crazy. That's unbelievable. So, uh, it went by fast. and uh, so just You were on the air that morning, right, with the I first was. team or whoever it was I, back then? I right? was. Yeah. We were sitting there and watching it and had no idea what was really going on. It's almost like it was uh, – Somebody was just making something up or a little Cessna plane. It was just, uh, you know, you thought tipped in and somebody, you know, lost control. And then you realize how serious the, right. uh, the What's whole What's going thing on? Was. It was right. just a crazy, crazy time 20 years ago. Jeez. Anyway, we uh, we do have a lot of sports. we got a lot of stuff going on. Canes, uh, App State tomorrow, big game for them. And and uh, just as big or, or bigger as the following day, the Miami Dolphins. Up in New England, take on the the Patriots and uh, and all of that. Uh, we're gonna have Larry Bluestein. The other part of, of football that we do talk about here on Friday is high school football. And um, our teams nationally, overall, we we struggled a little bit last week. We we didn't talk about it. Might have been since we've been doing high school football, one of the craziest finishes to three or four games. You couldn't make them up. On some of the things that happened to St. Thomas, a uh, touchdown pass with 10 seconds left to beat them, uh, Tampa Bay Jesuit. Um, and what happened is Chaminade American Heritage uh, Plantation game, a walk-off field goal, we'll call it, or uh, last-second field goal uh, to beat Chaminade. Uh, Northwestern Booker T, craziest last couple of minutes maybe of all. Booker T looked like there was going to be an upset. Bulls with 30 seconds left. Throw a 20-yard touchdown pass with one second left. I mean, this just went <laughs> on and on and on. Central, by the way, he's got Gorman, and they got a really good field goal kicker, and he slips on a 35-yard field goal. And again, not that far. Slips on it, and um, 
So Gorman wins 21-20. I mean, I, you just <laughs> – and by the way, not that every game came down to the fourth quarter. Every one of those games came down to the last couple of seconds. Right, right. Whether you were going to win or, or you were going to lose. So – uh, we'll talk about because we got a whole bunch more. A lot of them still playing each other again this week, and and here we go. So Larry Bluestein, our high school football insider, will join us uh, seven twenty this morning. We'll talk to Blue uh, about the craziness of uh, of last week, and including the Deerfield beat story, where twenty one nothing to half. Dillard was looking real good against Deerfield Beach, and uh, uh, because of COVID, they decide to shut the game down at half, and then. Uh, a day or two later, the the coach resigns from uh, just uh, there. Got to be more to the story. Something you would think there, there is, right? So anyway, we'll uh, we'll find out and talk to uh, Larry uh, about some of those things going on. Some other news we haven't gotten to. Jason Jackson will take over for Mike Inglis. That was a quick decision. Um, so so the question I saw on social media that people were showing me, my daughter, um, was might get pushed out because Mike's still talking about working. And and I I don't know. Um I don't know what the deal is. Mike Mike's saying he's sound like, hey, I, I I'm not necessarily I thought yesterday was a little bit surprising. Yeah. That he said, uh, hey, I'm done. You know, I've been doing this forever. I'm really gonna enjoy my time. And uh he goes, No, no, I don't know now. I might be going back and you're like, you might be going back to another job. Well you got the best friggin' one of the best right. jobs in the NBA. Right. Um so, I, I don't I don't know that I know everybody was trying to to figure it out. I guess that falls under the conspiracy. A of little course bit. it does, right? But you're wondering. Then of course you get your comments on people that love this style and uh, don't like his style, and, and I get that. Like it, not you know sometimes the way you say hello to the way they hear it, <laughs> two different you know, ways, or if five different you're ways. too critical and you'll have one person say I love Mike and the other one say. You know, he was too negative on my team. And when they play great, Mike would tell you they were playing right. great. And they're struggling. He let you know they're struggling. He would he would let you know, and he would let you know who the players were that were struggling the most. And uh, and so he, uh, so I thought it was kind of interesting. But congratulations to uh, Jason Jackson. Apparently, really won the job, which I had no idea because he's so damn good on his TV stuff. He right. Really, I hope we don't lose any. We're gonna lose some of that TV stuff with him. That, that's a problem. Well. One of the more entertaining guys I've I've ever been around. He he's the only guy that can set up fan rules and put those pieces up and have me just crying with his entertainment. And he gets somebody with him and and do it. I used to just die laughing. I I've never seen a guy literally. Hey, and if you act up, we're gonna have to let you go. Go. Yeah, I mean, and they would just make funny bits out of it before, so the fans wouldn't get mad that instead of, of you know usually they go. Any uh, action where fans act up, you will be kicked out and never, be, you know, and they do that straight stuff. And <laughs> the Heat let uh, Jason Jackson make a piece out of it. So it was kind of kind of funny stuff. Uh, good for Jax. Yeah, nice man. Hear, good man. for Jax. Yep. Jax is uh, really apparently just seeing his comments yesterday, really uh, wanted to uh, to get the job. And uh, I'm sure, listen, I'm sure a lot of guys in the NBA wanted the friggin' job. That's, that's a good job. If you're into it and you love basketball, that's a damn good job right there. Right team. Um, that would be a fun one, man. There's no question about that. And uh, and so you have all that stuff. And then we had a great Monday night football game last night. Just a, a great way. You know, we always talk about that first game for teams or first game for the league. And you're putting out your best. You're putting out. You're putting out there the world champions on a Thursday night right. at home for the celebration and everything that they do. And the fans back and Fans were not back last year um, in the state of Florida. Well, they were last night. But last night, uh, it Packed was fun. House. Got a great game, just a great game. I mean, come on, Brady with a comeback to finish off the game. I mean, that's like, okay. Well, you can't script it any better than that for Brady, right? Minute and change left. Got to drive down and kick a field goal to win the game. It's perfect. But there was too much time on the clock for Brady. I um, Yes. I, I just thought, actually, I wasn't sure. The big surprise – for me, it wasn't how Tom Brady played. I mean, with those weapons and all those guys back. Dak Prescott was the surprise for me. He just played for a guy that hadn't played, and we're wondering about his shoulder, and is he afraid of his ankle? Is he really stepping into his throws because of his ankle? And all that yap that was out there. 
And that guy threw it last night like he's going to throw for about 6,000 yards this year. He's got great weapons if they do decide not to go to the running game this year. They didn't um, last night. Boy, yeah. I'll tell you what, they, they can throw it around. So you end up, it wasn't a blowout. It wasn't one of those games you turn off early in the third quarter and go, oh, I'm going to bed. This is an ugly, ugly early, if you've ever done that when you're dating, ugly early. And uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll just tell you, that that one was uh, – now you were watching to the end. If you could Fan, stay up that late and keep fantastic. your eyes open, and it gave yeah. you so the NFL, uh, the commissioner and the gang in New York had to be real happy with that kickoff. And by the way, you got some good games naturally, like Seattle and Indy, uh, both really good teams. Cleveland and Kansas City could be the best of all of them. I'm curious about Green Bay and uh, New Orleans with Jameis. I think that becomes a good game. Yep. And I'm wondering with Baltimore getting hit with uh, the injury bug. What are they going to look like uh, playing Las Vegas? Uh, so, so we got a lot of good ones, man. A lot of really fun games coming up here that uh, should be uh, should be a lot of fun. And for you fantasy football people, yep. and I'm not one of them that have teams. Well, I hope you had some of those receivers last night, or, or one of those quarterbacks, because you got you got off to a good start. You you got off to a real real good start. Last night in that game with uh, Dak and Brady and their and all the weapons, you know we were talking during the break, and I go, you know, I was thinking about Randy Moss, Wes Welker, and Gronk. Yep, that's a hell of a trio right so that's there. That's pretty good. Yep. And I go, you know, I think if Brady could tell the truth and not worry about hurting any anybody's feelings, he would tell you the weapons he has right now. Hmm, and Randy is. Moss is clearly the best of all. Right. So I, I get that. Um. So if you could have if you but these three uh, yeah these three, yeah, these yeah. three that he has right now Antonio Brown is a third wide receiver yeah no that helps yeah it helps running by guys at thirty three years old or thirty two but if you could ask Brady right now you could line up with Gronk from that year with Randy Moss and Wes or Godwin Evans Antonio Brown or Gronk from now woo yeah I think I would pick this this crew even I'm, though Randy Moss the best you know if he's not the best receiver of all time he's right there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I would go with this. I mean, lucky for the Bucks, they won. We're not talking about Godwin coughing that football up as he's going into the end zone. No, that would that was game, huge, so. right? Two yard line. He basically got rid of that ball. Yeah, that was huge. That stunk. That game had a owners. little bit of everything, man. That was uh, uh, that some was a draw lot of balls fun. in there. We had some. I, listen, well, C.D. Lamb had 15 targets and seven catches. He must have had four drops out of his first five balls. The interception was so, uh, right. was dropped by C.D. Lamb across the middle of the field. Let Let me ask you guys though. There, there's an unwritten rule that I didn't set up that's been around forever. You turn the ball over four times in the NFL, you lose. <laughs> you should. Right. Unless the other team does the same thing. The Bucks last night turned the ball over four times and had 11 penalties for over 100 yards. Those are nasty, make you look bad, make you look sloppy. And Tampa Bay still won that game. Yep. So we, we can talk about one team did this, one team did that, and Dallas wasn't very good in the red zone last night. I think they're one of four inside the 20. But the Bucks. Well, Greg, the leg didn't help. No. No. Started the game off as bad as any kicker could do it. Missed the extra What point happened to Greg, the leg, goal. man? I don't know. He's used to kicking inside that? the he dome. Did, like an interview with the uh, sideline girl, and he said he was, like, wasn't feeling great. Right. Can I just say this? My history with field goal kickers that get off the slow starts – Sticks Don't finish the them. season. Those, de <laughs> those demons right. kick in, and they right. never quite get rid of them. Got to get them home inside that dome. I'm sure it'll kick a little bit better. Outside, and, not as and, great. And if they miss a short one, yep. if they miss one in the 30 range, then you're going, oh, God, now we're asking him to make a 48-yard or 55. And, yeah, I start, uh, I start worrying about that a little bit. Hey, I like our guy, man. I like our guy down yep. here. Yep. Hell, he's the best we've had, the uh, all-pro kicker, Jason Sanders. No problem there, Jace. You just keep kicking them, my man. Thank you. What, he win three games last year? Yeah, at least, right? Three or four games. It was crazy. How many games does he have? Four, five, or six field goals in a game, oh, too, right? Now, <laughs> now, speaking of red zone problems, yeah. He's had to do that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we got, uh, we got a lot more stuff to get to here this morning as uh, we continue here on a football Friday. We are going to flip it over to some high school football at 720. And, uh, by the way, just your thoughts on last night's game, 305-567. 0560 as uh, we continue on here on a on a football Friday. And by the way, just so you know, even if you're a little angry or, or something out there, you can't mess up my Friday. You you just can't. Now, 
I'm trying not to mess your Friday up. I hope you won't try to mess mine up today. That's nice words. Because we, yeah. we got a nice few nice few days coming right. up here, hopefully. It's a big well, you got a lot weekend. of football, man. Right. A lot of football. Hey, uh, we got a lot of something else. A lot of South Florida Chevy dealers to get to this weekend. Before all these games start up today and early in the morning, you want to get an early start and start looking around, and you're doing some test drives, and you need something new. And let me see, you need a brand new look. You want something that looks really good, but you want a lot of space. Of course, you want a great look, but you want something you can afford. Hmm. You know what that sounds like? Your South Florida Chevy dealers. That's what that sounds like. Starting with the SUV family. And I got to tell you, the big boys are beautiful. Never look better than the Tahoes and Suburban. Got a brand new look. More space to make it real perfect for you. And if you're getting ready to do a little traveling on the weekend and you need that extra space and you still want a great look, with a fantastic deal, we got them in our big SUVs right now. And how about our midsize SUVs? That new Traverse, boy, I'll tell you what, it's a midsize SUV. But I'm always careful when I say midsize, when I see all the space and how comfortable and how roomy the back seat is and room even to put the, all the other stuff you need for a, for a little trip. Boy, I'll tell you what, it is roomy and it's got a great look. And our smaller SUV like the Equinox SUV, Boy, I'll tell you what, got everything you want. And right now, those Blazers, Stroll Blazers, Chevy Blazers are on fire. They got a really sexy look and unbelievable price on them for you. So get out, take some test rides, take the family out there. Did I forget all those Silverado trucks we have? Strong, durable trucks for you. Listen, no excuses this weekend. You've got convenient locations in Dade, Broward, even Monroe County. Find new roads and fall in love at your South Florida Chevy dealer today. I'm Erin Ryan, political commentator, comedy writer, and host of Crooked Media's Hysteria. And I'm co-host Alyssa Mastromonaco, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff for President Obama. Each week on Hysteria, we are joined by a team of hilariously opinionated ladies to discuss the headlines from the serious to the absurd. We cover everything from reproductive rights to rom-coms and break down the political news of the week and cultural stories that affect women's lives. New episodes of Hysteria drop every Thursday. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Odyssey's going back to school, and we've got all the supplies you need, like A-plus exclusive music stations and podcasts to help you or your student excel. Wake up and get the school day started with Acoustic Sunrise, the best mix of acoustic pop. Hit the books with classical Odyssey, passionate classical music to help you focus while you study. Listen to essential school podcasts like Grammar Girl's Quick and Dirty Tips for Better Writing, and be inspired with TED Talks Daily. Get back to school with new exclusive stations, plus all your favorite local radio stations and podcasts on Odyssey. You want to know what wagertainment is? It's the picks, the analysis, the information mixed with the laughter and the entertainment. Smart sports betting content that'll put a smile on your face. The BetQL Network, streaming live each day and helping you bet smarter. If you're a sports fan, you know why you should listen? It's sports betting content without the BS. No hot takes, no nonsense. The BetQL Network, streaming live right now on Odyssey. Sports, bets, and entertainment.